My name is George Wegman. I've been diving around the beautiful tropical islands of the Philippines for over 25 years. Even as a child, I was fascinated by the fantastic creatures and the amazing shapes and colors you see underwater. In the course of my career as a diving instructor, I have noticed that divers encounter so many things underwater that after the dive they have difficulty remembering what it was they exactly saw. Also, since we tend to focus on the larger animals like turtles and tunas, we overlook the small, well-hidden creatures that make up the bulk of a coral reef's population. With this video, we would like to show you a sample of the marine life in the Philippines. The film is divided into five segments, each showing a different view of the animals on the reef. Depending on where you are, the same animal can be known under different names. This can be very confusing. That is why we have included the scientific family or species names. This way you can look up these animals in any fish book in any language. The more we learn, the more we enjoy. This philosophy has allowed me to retain my sense of wonder and curiosity after more than 2,500 dives. The more I dive, the more I appreciate the amazing variety of life forms in the oceans. 50 years ago, we didn't have the scuba gear, and 50 years from today, we might not have the animals. So let's go diving now, and let's enjoy the beautiful marine life of the Philippines while we still can. This is what a healthy coral reef looks like. It is the home of all the creatures we'll be meeting. But our story doesn't quite start here. It starts in murky water. Any living thing drifting in the current is plankton. These mostly tiny particles are the beginning of the food chain. This is where the cycle of life begins. Plankton is food for many creatures, both small and large. Plankton is essential for life on our planet, not just as food in the water, but also because it produces oxygen. Did you know that most of the oxygen in the atmosphere is produced not by rainforests, but by plankton? Many people can't imagine that these rock-like structures are alive, but they are. The outside of a coral is covered with tiny little holes. In each hole lives a tiny little animal. These animals are called polyps. It's like an ant's nest or a bee's hive. Of course, it's not the rock that's alive. The rock is their home. Polyps are constantly enlarging their homes which become a coral reef. This is built from calcium carbonate filtered from the water. Only two structures made by living beings on this planet are visible from space, the Great Wall of China and the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Like fields of flowers, soft corals can give a healthy reef beautiful shades of colors. Their name derives from the fact that they have no stiff limestone skeleton. Soft corals are also known as octocorals, due to their eight small feeding arms, unlike the six that hard corals have. These polyps filter out organic materials from the current. All corals live in a symbiosis with algae called zooxanthellae, which also provides them with additional nutrients. These algae are also responsible for the magnificent colors we enjoy about corals. Four hundred fifty million years ago, the most dominant life form on Earth were sponges. These multi-celled sessile animals are among the most efficient filters in nature. To filter out its food, a barrel sponge pumps thousands of liters of water through its body every day. So they not only help keep your dishes clean, but also the oceans. Only a few kinds of sponges have definite forms like the barrel sponge. This can live to 100 years and grow to over 1.5 meters. Sea squirts are also known as ascidians. Amazingly enough, they are classified as vertebrates because they have a vestigial spine. They occur either individually or in colonies. Sea squirts use tiny hairs to pump water through their bodies. Any organic particle then gets filtered out as nourishment. 
Sea squirts take on strange shapes and usually bright colors. One way to identify them is that they pucker up whenever you touch them. One of my dreams in diving has always been to find a pearl in an oyster. This hasn't happened yet, but looking at oysters and clams has revealed to me a different kind of treasure. The soft fleshy tissue at the lip of their shells contains colonies of the algae Suzantele, which are brilliantly colored. If you have a good light, this is a sight you will never forget. Giant clams can grow over 1.5 meters across and may live to be 200 years old. Although they might appear to be plants, gorgonians are animals. A good way to judge the direction of currents in an area is to look at the way they grow. These soft corals look very similar to sea fans and like all corals are filter feeders. They can grow up to 3 meters across and come in different colors. One way of describing fire coral is to call them jellyfish that got tired of swimming around. They reproduce themselves in the same manner. Also, these coral-like animals have specialized defense polyps with the same stinging cells as jellyfish. They can grow in a variety of shapes and forms, but are always brownish-red with white to beige tips. It is a good idea not to touch any kind of coral, especially this kind unless you want to find out firsthand how it got the name fire coral. The frogfish, which is probably the ugliest fish in the ocean, is also one of the most unique animals. It is not rare at all, but usually so well hidden and so immobile that most divers will not recognize it even if it is right in front of them. It is rare to see a frogfish swimming, and they are very sluggish swimmers. Their fins have evolved into legs, which they use to brace themselves into a perfect ambush position. They dangle a piece of skin as a lure in front of their mouths, much in the same way a fisherman will use a line, hook and bait. Any fish biting at this lure will experience the fastest movement in the animal kingdom. In 6 milliseconds, the frogfish will suck in its prey. To an observer, the eaten fish will simply have disappeared. No other creature, whether on land, in the air, or underwater, can move so fast. This common reef fish is characterized by two unique barbels located on the tip of its chin. These sensory organs, which are equipped with taste buds, are used to churn up the bottom in search of small fish or invertebrates upon which the goatfish feed. These barbels are also strong enough to turn over rocks and small corals. Like human males who sometimes wear a mustache to make themselves appear more masculine, the barbels of the male goatfish are displayed in courtship rituals to attract the interest of the female. These elongated fish are not named for their musical abilities or the sounds they make underwater. Trumpet fish are vertically oriented in their hunting methods and unlike most fish can spear straight down to catch their prey. In most reefs they occur in two colors, either camouflage green or less frequently bright yellow. They are distantly related to seahorses. Seahorses are small bizarrely shaped creatures which look very much like the night figure in chessboard sets. They commonly inhabit seagrass beds where there is not much current. They anchor themselves with their flexible tails to plants or corals and eat plankton and other smaller creatures which drift by. Pipefish, 